Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Cole and in today's video we're going to be checking another item off our to-do list working on our all aluminum snowcat. Today we're going to start working on the controls and we're keeping things pretty simple with this setup. We're going to use push-pull cables that connect to the swash plates on our tandem piston pumps. Those cables are going to head up to the driver's seat where we're going to build an assembly today with a twin stick setup that comes up between your legs that connects into those push-pull cables. It should be a fun little assembly to make and to give you a bit better idea of what we're gonna be doing, let's go consult the drawings I have done. Okay, I've been working on these drawings for a little, oh, that's a different project, there we are. Been working on these drawings for a little while. As you can see, I uh, got all my dimensions down. I know what material I need to get. All we need to do is make a little bit of an order list. We need one, Metal, two, some spinny things. The start of this project is going to have us on our 1940s South Bend lathe. It's a perfect machine for taking round parts and making them, well, more round. The beginning of this project is going to be a little bit machining heavy. We have to make end stops and sleeves that are going to be used in this control assembly. The first step here is to turn down the outside diameter to make it nice and concentric before we head over to the bandsaw and start roughing out the individual components. With all of our aluminum pieces pretty much cut down to their rough size, we throw them back in the lathe, face them off, chamfer off the sharp edges, and this is all in preparation for drilling out the inside diameter. This inside diameter, for some of the pieces, will lock onto the shaft itself, and others it will sleeve over it, operating independently. Don't worry, it's all going to make sense when you see it come together. So any of the components that are going to be attached to the shaft itself, like the end stops, are going to be drilled out to the shaft's diameter. In this case, that's three quarters of an inch. And then another component that'll sleeve over the shaft, we're obviously going to drill out a little bit larger just to put some clearance in there. Yay! First of many parts done. With the second part, basically at the same stage, it's time to put in some counter bores to allow these needle bearings to press inside the shaft. These needle bearings are going to be one of the parts that allow us to have a really nice, tight, smooth feel to our controls. And then comes the time where I actually need to check my critical measurements. I'm starting to learn, I guess, because uh, I used to always overshoot my measurements. This time, I just had a little bit more I needed to bore out, and then we had a really, really good fit. If you screw up enough, eventually you'll learn. With that component complete, we part off some of the end stops, and that is a bulk of the lathe work done. Well, I finished up the rest of the machining off camera because it obviously gets pretty repetitive. The little bit of work we have to do on these still will be just installing some grub screws because a couple of these collars will secure to the shaft. 
Uh, this one won't, and that'll allow us to have one lever operate the shaft for movement and one, op one lever operate the sleeve. Um, and they'll, in they'll operate independently of each other. We just need to put the needle bearings in the sleeve and then we can put everything together and start to have an idea of what it's gonna look like and then work on the housing that's gonna hold it all together. I know I should be using a press, everyone's gonna chirp at me for this, but this is a very easy fit and uh, a little hammer action is all it needs. I know I'll still get yelled at for that. There we go. Two sets of needle bearings. So what the main operating shaft is, it's a three quarter inch uh, precision, is three quarter inch, three quarter inch precision shafting and it's ground to a very nice finish. It has a very high tolerance. It's like bang on 0.750, um, and that allows these needle bearings to fit very nicely on it. And this is all gonna be held with some flange pillow blocks at the ends. Um, but we can put everything together now, and let's get an overall length, and then we'll drill some grub screws. In between these two pieces, we're also gonna run a thrust bearing because I really want this to feel good and not bind or chafe or wear out. So we're going a little all out here. So this is going to get grub screwed to the shaft. This one will get to spin independently. So its arm will come straight up and then its other arm will come back. This one will have an arm that comes straight up and then there will be another sleeve down here that has the arm that goes back. So your two steering handles and your two brackets that go to the push-pull cables. So that'll be retained in place and that can still spin freely. With the layout done on those parts, we can head over to the milling and drilling machine. A machine that, uh, well, puts holes in things and generally speaking, makes things not round. These parts are getting drilled out for a 5 16 scrub screw, but as you're gonna see later on, I don't actually have any 5 16 scrub screws, so a socket cap screw is uh, just gonna have to do for now. I'll come back and fix this up later on. It all gets put together with another pillow block. We'll cut that down. Now we need to make the frame for this. The frame for this assembly is going to be made out of 2.5 inch by 3 16 aluminum angle. We're going to get both pieces cut up. And then we're going to mark out the holes for our pillow block bearings. <laughs> and then comes the time in some builds when you realize you're so focused on making the same part twice that you actually needed to make the mirror image. Yeah, it happens. So just remake it. And I didn't have the same thickness material, so I went a little thicker.
With the rough assembly done, we're going to now mark out where the flat spots have to go on our main operating shaft. And then we're going to head back over to the machine that makes round things not round. With most of the work done on those round components, we're going to head over to the CNC table and start cutting out some of the flanges we're going to need to connect our operating handles to this assembly we just made. Well, we sure have a lot of bits and pieces now. I decided to go with a double shear mount. This will get mounted to the rollers. And then these will go together with our pieces of round bar that are gonna be put in there as well. And that's gonna make our lever arm. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just keep watching. We're gonna put all this stuff together. I'm gonna start by just tacking a few things together making sure everything's square, straight, um, and then work on kind of some of the other components. It sort of all has to come together as one, and I won't be able to go too far into making the back arms that actually go to the cables. I haven't received the cables yet, and I can't seem to get a date on when they're going to be here.
Look at that. Oh, those feel so good. Oh yeah, they're a little long. I cut them, gave myself extra. You can always cut them down. I'm gonna make some nice handles for them. So we'll be able to adjust where they sit with the cable assembly that we'll do later on. I don't have those push-pull cables, so I'm kind of getting to a standstill, but uh, we'll have adjustment for where these sit and where the throw is. It should have about six inches total throw it needs, which should feel good in your arms. I kind of gauged all the linkages by that. So, you know, full back will be nice and comfy and full forward. You can just sort of rest your arms there. I'm trying to think about drivability, you know, not just make it work, but yeah. I think that's really cool. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the controls finished in one video. I really need the push-pull cables to get the other end of this setup complete and all the mounting. So I'll leave that for another video. And then we have to work on the pump end that connects to these levers. I think this looks pretty slick. It feels so nice. There is very little play. It's nice and tight. Um, thank you everyone for watching and watching all the other videos on the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.